Hey everybody. Here we have an old IBM Think Center desktop computer. And the reason why I picked it up for service today was because it's been making some noises. To fix that problem, all we have to do is oil the fans. The CPU fan and the rear exhaust fan on this computer need to be oiled. But upon removing the cover on this machine, I noticed that there was more problems with this thing. On this motherboard, we have a whole bunch of bad capacitors. Well, actually, about six or so. This one here. This one back here. One over here. And there are some more back behind the CPU heatsink that are not in good shape. And these are all Chemicons. And if I'm not mistaken, the reason what's causing this is that some Chemicons were defective. Not sure if it was caused by the same reason as regular capacitor plug or not, but I've had several machines that have came in over the years, and I've seen several other computers in the past that have had failing Chemicon capacitors on them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have to recap this motherboard. But the surprising thing about this computer is it still works just fine. See, here's the thing when it comes to bad capacitors. When you have capacitors that bulge and leak, a lot of times you'll have system failure. Many times the computer itself will just act really weird. It'll do things that you would never think it would do. I've seen computers in the past that would not shut down on their own, would not start up on their own. And in some cases when you have capacitors fail on power supplies, I've heard people actually have tales of sticking hair dryers into the power supply and heating things up and then the power supply would start. Like I say, system instability will occur a lot of times with um, capacitor failure. Especially when you have bad capacitors on the CPU, VRM, or any other important voltage regulator module on the motherboard. In some cases, capacitors actually regulate the voltage level itself. This is why some power supplies can have catastrophic failure when the capacitors fail. For example, the best tag HCX 2 video 12 b power supply. But surprisingly enough, there's every once in a while I'll find a computer that has a whole bunch of bad capacitors in it, yet it still functions as, as if nothing's wrong. So just for the heck of it, we're going to start this bad boy up. You, you'll get to hear the noise of the fans too while we're at it. So here's the monitor. I'm going to plug this thing in. And we'll see how it sounds. Before continuing, I'm going to tell you a little more about this computer. This computer has spent its life in a very harsh environment. See, most computers nowadays are located in nice, clean offices. But this computer here has served its life in the office at a diesel truck garage, the mechanic's garage at Yellow Roadway in Charlotte, North Carolina. This computer is eight years old. The power supply on it is dated 2004, so we know it's around eight years old. And surprisingly enough, this thing isn't that dirty, but listen to the fans as I power this thing on. Have listen to those fans. I'm not mistaken, this thing has run for a while like this, too. See, this thing still starts right up just fine. When I come to get this thing, I never heard, they, ne they never describe any issues of the computer itself crashing or anything like that. So, we're going to go ahead and shut this thing back off so we can begin working on it. <laughs> Not a very pretty sound, is it? This is what a computer sounds like. Well, some computers sound like after they've been running in a truck garage for several years. And since the capacitor replacement procedure takes such a good long time, 
I'm not going to actually take a video of that portion, but I will show you the finished product after I replace the capacitors on the board. So we have about six or so capacitors to replace on this thing. This amazes me. This thing still works just fine. It's a little bit on the slow side, but I don't, I, I don't think that's really to do with the capacitors. Alright, so we're going to begin working on this thing. What I'm going to, have to do here is I'm going to, have to pull the motherboard out and desolder the back capacitors and replace them with good ones. Okay, I just got this machine back together and it works just fine. It actually sounds like it started up faster than there before. I replaced all of the Kimicon KZG capacitors with different ones out of my stash. And go and have a look here. So we'll show you guys something about this particular motherboard and this machine. This motherboard and many others I've seen from, from like ASUS have the capacitor polarity back markings backwards. Normally on motherboards, excuse that, I have my flashlight falling on the floor. Anyways, on motherboards, you have markings to tell that tell you how to install a capacitor. Normally, the shaded markings on the motherboard indicate that the particular side is negative in terms of polarity. But in this case, they got the markings backwards, so on this motherboard where you see markings the polarity is positive and the non-shaded side is negative so this is something to watch out for and you have to be careful if you're working on a machine like this they don't get the polarity backwards because of course by habit most techs will think that the shaded side is negative anyways I went ahead and oiled up the exhaust fan I had to replace the CPU fan Actually, I have, happen to have another one of these IBM style heat sinks laying around, so I just went and stuck it in there. And this thing thinks like it's good to go. So I can put it back together, and it'll be going back to yellow tomorrow morning. And I went ahead and took the blown capacitors out of this machine and tossed them to the fireplace so they could have their horrifying death. It's what they deserve for blowing up in this machine. Anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask.